Well, when among the 8 to 10 million citizens of Britain, the 2 million of s or so uh, who were living in America decided to take off the yoke of their sovereign, they had two targets. One was to discourage the monarch to keep monitoring uh, this can their country. And the other target was to be acknowledged by the other countries. And for these, for to, to implement uh, what was necessary to get at this target, the, probably the best help they could hope for was France. Because France was a powerful country, had been a pow most powerful country for a century in Europe. Because France was entangled with all the diversity of the other European powers, that is the main domineering powers in the world. And also, for a century, France had been the traditional, traditional enemy of the United Kingdom. And even if United Kingdom had been enemy, well, the individual British citizens were not. So why not trying to make an alliance with France? Let us summarize why, where, when and how France sponsored American independence. Why? A preventive war against an aggressive competitor overseas. At the beginning of the French and Indian War, the British Navy had captured 300 merchant ships and their 6,000 sailors even before it had been declared. Where the challenge spread all over the world with a special common concern about the rich trade of the West Indies. When involvement began as early as December 1775, and increased constantly until the peace of 1783. How did it materialize? Through the sacrifices of her soldiers and her sailors, by the deployment worldwide of her field and naval armies, and by the gifts and loans of the real treasury. But what was Europe made of? Continental Europe was a mosaic of many populations with predators of different sizes. In the second half of the 18th century, the traditional ball grain in Europe had changed with the emergence of Prussia, which competed with Austria for ascendancy among the hundreds of principalities composing the so-called German Empire a growing intervention in Central Europe by Russia, which was surrounded by countries traditionally supported by France, Poland, Sweden, and the Ottoman Empire. This European situation thus had a great impact on the decision-making in France. For King Louis XVI and his minister, Vergennes, the news of the revolt in New England raised immediately the thorny question, should we enter this conflict, and if so, how? The French leaders had to consider the effects on America, France, and Europe. What are the American intentions and attitude towards a French intervention? From London, the French diplomat Beaumarchais urges Vergennes, 
The time has come for France to intervene. A secret envoy, the Chevalier de Bon Vouloir, is dispatched to Philadelphia in the fall of 1775. His report reaches Vergen in February, reporting two main developments. The Patriots have decided to proclaim their independence and fight fiercely for it. They expect from France military equipment and two competent engineer officers, well recommended and reliable. Vergen outlines for the king why France should support the rebels. On April 12, 1776, after having consulted the other members of his council, Louis XVI makes the decision to accept Vergen's recommendations. As helping the rebels will inevitably lead to war, how do we get prepared? Regarding the army, the French army had just been entirely reorganized and equipped with effective rifles and artillery. Regarding the navy, for Louis XVI, the navy will be the decisive factor in the emerging conflict. The navy minister is therefore ordered to protect neutral and American shipping, to develop the Mediterranean fleet in case Brest should be blockaded, to fill magazines and arsenals with all they lacked, and to refit the fleets, beginning with 20 ships of the line and the necessary for grades, to be ready by October 1776. How can we prevent the other major competing states in Europe from entering again into a coalition with the British? The king decides that France should not appear as aggressing Britain directly, negotiate to obtain the neutrality of the Central European powers, take steps to involve Spain, ruled by Charles III, whose navy would help scatter British squadrons. However, Spain is not yet prepared to choose her camp. While France prepares for a war through diplomacy and rearmament, a secret help is launched and sponsored by her government. On May 2, 1776, Brissas and Vergen decide to supply the insurgents with military equipment by helping Beaumarchais to launch a private company. Beaumarchais will call this company Roderick et Hortales. Vergen has written to Beaumarchais about this new venture. Nous vous donnerons secrètement un million. Nous tâcherons d'obtenir de la Cour d'Espagne qu'elle s'unisse à nous dans cette affaire et vous fournisse de son côté une somme égale. Avec ces deux millions et la coopération des particuliers qui voudront s'associer à votre entreprise, vous fonderez une grande maison de commerce et, à vos risques et périls, vous approvisionnerez l'Amérique d'armes, de munitions, d'objets d'équipement et de tous autres objets qui lui seront nécessaires pour soutenir la guerre. Nos arsenaux vous livreront des armes et des munitions, mais vous les remplacerez ou vous les paierez. The new Roderick Hortelis company is officially registered and soon supplements its financing from public sources by raising a third million livres from private French firms. The company buys and equips a fleet of merchant ships sailing from French ports. Arriving in France in 1776, the envoy from the Continental Congress, Silas Dean, is introduced to Beaumarchais. He requests arms and every necessary article of clothing for 30,000 men. 
These demands are reinforced by Ben Franklin's arrival as chief of the American delegation. Very popular, this respected scientist and diplomat will greatly contribute to a better understanding between the persons in charge of the two nations. On September 11, 1776, Beaumarchais lists for the two courts of Versailles and Madrid in Spain the equipment and armament he has gathered to sail to America. By secret royal decision, a little over a hundred officers, including some foreigners, recruited by the American delegation or as volunteers, are enrolled in American service, most of them dispatched from France. Let us mention four examples. Do French government's decisions? Secretly commissioned by the French government in January 1777, Chief Military Engineer Du Portail embarks with three other military engineers. He will lead the U.S. military engineering effort throughout the war and also bring his expertise to General Washington's Strategy Council. The French War Minister introduces Franklin to a middle-aged captain who had retired 15 years earlier from the Prussian army. He is dispatched to America as a potential instructor for the Continental Army at French expense and on a Beaumarchais ship. Known as Baron de Steuben, he will become an efficient drill master after his arrival at Valley Forge in 1778. Former chief of the king's secret diplomacy, Comte de Broglie, promotes and sponsors the departure of volunteer officers. Among them is the Marquis de Lafayette. Benjamin Franklin is especially interested in the political advantage of having someone well-connected at the French court, serving the Patriots' cause. Though there are fears that his high visibility might handicap the efficiency of French diplomacy, Lafayette will tell a reticent Congress that he has come to serve, and at his own expense. He will prove his soldier's capacity at the Battle of Brandywine. Traveling with Lafayette, initially as a sort of mentor, is Baron de Calbe, a veteran of 35 years' service in the French Army. He speaks English and had spent the whole year of 1768 in political analysis of the British colonies for the previous foreign minister. At the end of 1777, France has completed her rearmament and is ready for an active war. But Britain is not. A British army occupies Philadelphia while another, composed of over 5,000 British soldiers and German mercenaries, surrenders at Saratoga. In Paris, on February 6, 1778, two treaties, one of amity and commerce and a second, secret one, pledging a defensive alliance, are signed by Conrad Gerard representing the king and the congressional delegates. Thus, France, first of all nations, acknowledges the existence of the new American nation. The war is initially limited to the Atlantic Ocean. On Europe's coasts, at Wesson, Ushant off Brittany, a battle involving 32 ships of each navy proved that the French Royal Navy is able to challenge the British fleet. On West Africa's shores, 
the Duc de Lausanne captures British commercial holdings and fortresses in Senegal, so depriving Britain of part of the slave trade with America. In the West Indies, the French governor of Martinique storms Dominica Island. Meanwhile, in the American theater of operations, Admiral Distin is discreetly dispatched from Toulon to America with 12 ships of the line and Conrad Gerard as an ambassador. British forces evacuate Philadelphia, thus recovering troops necessary for their operations in the Caribbean. Destin is prevented from, from penetrating New York Bay by the draft of his ships. The channel buoys have been removed. Destin attempts a landing at Newport in Rhode Island. A sea battle with the British fleet is interrupted by a huge storm. The French fleet must sail to Boston for refitting. The next year, Destin, with a fleet of 25 sails, storms the island of Grenada in the West Indies, one of the precious British sugar islands, and puts the British squadron to flight. In September 1779, before sailing back to France, he attempts a combined co operation with the American army against Savannah, Georgia. It is a failure with heavy casualties. The British will successfully lay siege to Charleston, but they evacuate Newport. The Continental War has now turned to the south. Britain is now ready. At sea, 90 ships of the line are now equipped. On land, intense enrollment of mercenaries has been going on in the German principalities. Altogether, 30,000 of those will be brought to fight on the British side in the 13 colonies from 1778 to 1782. France with 66 ships of the line, feels the necessity of supplementing her forces with an ally to challenge the British. To achieve overall success, military action must be supplemented by diplomacy. Spain has now settled her differences with Portugal. She will not acknowledge the independence of the 13 revolted colonies as long as Britain has not and so she refuses allying herself directly with the Americans. Nevertheless, French Foreign Minister Vergen succeeds in dragging Spain into the war. The two countries conclude a formal alliance by the Treaty of Aranjuez, but the price for France is high. She agrees to help Spain to regain Gibraltar and Menorca recapture Florida, and take Jamaica. Attempt, as requested by an article of the treaty, a joint invasion of England. In accordance with this Spanish requirement, a landing in England is prepared. A vast French army, 38,000 infantry and cavalry, and 400 transport ships are massed on the Brittany and Normandy coasts. But by the time the 103 warships of the two fleets can be concentrated after three months at sea, the crews are decimated by illness. The landing will be canceled, but the threat of the Armada produced what is remembered as the British Plymouth Panic. The lasting result was that Britain maintained large forces in her homeland waters throughout the rest of the war. What about the other main powers in Europe? Conflict was brewing over Bavarian succession between Austria and the German principalities. 
including the Kingdom of Prussia, and with Russia preparing to enter the conflict. A settlement was reached through French mediation by the signature of the Teschen Convention in May 1779. Extension to a multi-continent war. In the West Indies, France must consolidate the territorial gains achieved by Governor Marquis de Bouillet and Admiral Destin, including the capture of Dominica, St. Vincent, and Grenada, and recapture of St. Martin and St. Bartholomew. And also, she must protect other French possessions in the Caribbean. The French Navy brings in reinforcements and three times defeats the British Admiral Rodney's assaults against the islands. Altogether, 20,000 soldiers are now deployed in defense of the area, where huge economic interests are at stake for the belligerents. The French Sugar Islands produce twice as much as the British Islands. Altogether, 50,000 French soldiers are now dispatched overseas. West Indies, Mediterranean, South Africa, Indian Ocean. And 38,000 men are still deployed on the French coasts facing England. In North America, for the first years of the conflict, the Congress was opposed to having any French soldiers landing in America. But in the fall of 1779, the insufficient capacity of the Continental Army, added to grave financial issues, induces Congress to cease excluding this possibility. After convincing their Spanish ally not to object, Vergen and the King of France decide upon an exceptional delivery of force to America. A chief of great experience and maturity, the Comte de Rochambeau, is preferred over the young candidate Lafayette to command this expedition particulière, as this secret operation is called sailing towards an undisclosed destination. Nine warships and 24 transports, manned by 5,000 sailors, leave Brest Harbor in the spring of 1780. 6,000 soldiers, officers, and military engineers embark with armament, including 32 heavy siege pieces and 32 field cannons, plus their carriages and limbers, their munitions, material, and supplies for months of campaign. After 70 days of this lengthy crossing, the convoy reaches Newport, disembarks, and fortifies the city. George Washington and General de Rochambeau who is placed under Washington's order by the King's decision, decide to wait for further French reinforcements to launch a campaign. In 1781, the British intensify the war in the South, hoping for so strong support from local loyalists. Lafayette is sent by George Washington to Virginia and the Carolinas to head the resistance of 2,000 regular Continentals and 2,000 militia against the twice as big and well-trained armies of Lord Cornwallis and the traitor Benedict Arnold. At the same time, the situation keeps changing in Europe and overseas. Britain declares war on the United Provinces the Netherlands, to prevent them entering the League of Neutrality. Their colonies will be threatened by the British Navy. British Admiral Rodney captures St. Eustatius Island, 
the West Indies base of military supply to continental America coming from Europe. From France, naval operations are launched to remove the pressure on the Allied forces in the Dutch colonies and in America. Admiral de Suffren's squadron sails to protect the Dutch colony in South Africa and further support the local revolt against the British in India. In the West Indies, a French naval squadron supports General Galvez's successful expedition against Pensacola in West Florida, meaning that a key harbor for the British trade with South America falls into the hands of the Allies. Comte de Grasse and a powerful naval force are first ordered to support Washington's and Rochambeau's operations. His final goal will be to capture Jamaica, as requested from France by Spain. Comte de Barra is dispatched to bring reinforcements to Rochambeau's army and take over command of the Newport squadron upon the death of Admiral de Ternay. The second part of this narrative will show the perfect synergy of the Allies' initiatives, which lead to a great victory and what followed to reach the final success.